Hi, it's Mike with AskTractorMike.com. Well, my last couple of videos have been about EPA announcements, and I'm getting kind of tired of doing these. This one is too, and this is a pretty big one. The EPA made an announcement at the Iowa State Fair, and this happened, I found out about it actually, after I produced my last video, and I'm like, man, I probably need to do a video on that one. Um, and it in impacts you if you're a pickup truck owner, or a tractor owner, or an RV owner, or whatever vehicle you've got that burns DEF, diesel exhaust fluid, as part of Tier 4. Let's get to the press release, and then I'll tell you what it means. And this says in, on Tuesday, and this a couple of Tuesdays ago, the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency Administrator Lee Zeldin announced new guidance urging engine and equipment manufacturers to revise diesel exhaust fluid system software in existing vehicles and equipment. EPA's action will protect hardworking blah, 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 blah. Uh, a lot of political talk there. And, and next paragraph, starting with model year 2027, EPA requirements state that all new diesel on-road trucks must be engineered to avoid sudden and severe power loss after running out of DEF, or diesel exhaust fluid. And of course, DEF is the substance that mixes with the exhaust to eliminate particulate matter in bigger trucks and tractors. To fix the problem for vehicles already in use, EPA's new guidance developed in collaboration with manufacturers, will work to ensure that the necessary software changes can be made on the existing fleet. Okay, this is, I think, good news. I don't think it's really political, but, uh, you know, a lot of these EPA announcements, if you're on one side or the other, uh, you can argue with each other. But I think, I think this was one that maybe all of us can, can agree with. It's probably common sense. Now, I am also going to tell you why it may not happen. So let's get to a second press release that kind of confirms everything. So this release came out after the announcement was made at the Iowa State Fair. And it kind of gives some background. Since 2010, SCR, which was developed, that's a selective catalyst reduction, was developed by the heavy duty truck manufacturers as an alternative compliance method has been used in nearly all on-road diesel vehicles and many non-road machines, uh, tractors, construction equipment, to meet EPA's 2010 uh, on-highway nitrous uh, of oxide standards and Tier 4 standards for non-road engines. SCR systems use onboard diagnostic sensors to detect when DEF runs out. If detected, the engine control module initiates an automatic D-rate. An automatic D-rate rapidly decreases the vehicle's performance. Within four hours, the vehicle speed is reduced to five miles per hour. That's if it's an on-road vehicle. And the decrease is to ensure compliance with EPA's regulations. However, these sensors can fail, triggering an automatic D-rate. D-rates can be catastrophic, limiting vehicles to speeds as little as five miles per hour within hours. And then they talk about all that that can do. Basically, what has happened, if you've ever owned one of these vehicles and it's gone to uh, D-rate mode, you've got a, a ticking clock to get it to a dealer or, or get to a, a fuel station and either put more DEF in it or get, get it fixed. And if it's a sensor that's gone bad, you've got to go to a dealership and have them work on it or, or work on it yourself. And so in the past, these limp mode or D-rate uh, happenings, uh, the computer programmed them pretty quickly. And so you didn't have much time to get it fixed. And if you were in the middle of farming, or if you're out on the open road on vacation in a motor coach, or if you're driving your semi truck and you're in the middle of nowhere, it, it could be a problem. So the EPA regulations changing all of this, I think is good. Now let's go to this chart that shows you what they've changed and what their requirements will be for 2027 and it's a little bit confusing but I'll try to interpret them as best I think I can. Let's start with pickups. If you go to the far right before this regulation change you basically had four hours of normal operation and then you could only drive five miles an hour. So that's pretty severe. Now what they're recommending going forward they've got initial, secondary, and final and this is a little confusing. Um, I think what I'm reading this saying is you just have a final. 
you've got 4,200 miles or 80 hours to get to a service area or to refill your diff, and then you're stuck at 45 miles an hour. That's the way I read that. I'm not sure that's totally right, but that's the way I read it. Now let's go to non-road, and this would include tractors. Before, to the far right, you had four hours to get it fixed, and then you were stuck at idle. That's as, as fast as it could go. And uh, that's that if you were in the back end of the field, and, and uh, that could be a problem. Um, so now, with non-road equipment, initially, you'll have 36 hours, and then you'll have a 25% torque reduction at that level. And then secondary, you have 100 hours. And the way I read this, at 100 hours, you get a 50% torque reduction. So there's, there's really an initial of 36 hours, and then at 100 hours, you, you're, you, you're going to really notice it. So I guess if you're, if you're farming, you've got 36 hours to, to get something done. So if you're in the middle of a project on the back end of the field, you, you, you're going to get it done and maybe get, get a whole project done if you're in the middle of a harvest. And then after that, uh, she gets rough and you lose a quarter of your power and then you lose half of your power. And now if you go back and down below and read the fine print, it says non-road constant speed engines like pumps, and I guess that's generators, gen sets, do not have an additional inducement step as any torque reduction may limit product functionality. And then we've got that 50% torque reduction. There's a couple of asterisks there. And it says non-road equipment can be restarted with full power three times for up to 30 minutes after inducement. Now, I'm, I'm going to go over really quickly heavy-duty trucks. Uh, you had four hours before to deal with it, and then you were doing five miles an hour. Uh, now there's a grace period there. And motor coaches were the same regulation as big trucks, and they've got a little longer grace period there. They've got 3,000 miles or 40 hours. I think the EPA has kind of realized that if, you, if you're driving a motor coach, you're out on vacation and you need time to deal with this situation. So I think these regulations are kind of common sense. I'm, I'm glad the EPA has done them. Now, the big question is, and I want to go back to my original page on the EPA announcement. Uh, because there's a couple of key things here that we need to highlight. First off, let's talk about starting with 2027, EPA requirements state that all new diesel on-road trucks must be engineered to avoid sudden and severe power loss after running out of DEF. Okay, that doesn't say anything about tractors. So in 2027, we've got the on-road trucks with new software that enables them to have these new regulations installed. But we don't know yet, I don't have clarification yet, about what happens with tractors. Now, the other thing I want to talk about, and this is probably the most important thing, go to the first paragraph here that we originally read, and it says, then this is what I think is, is really important here. Uh, Lee Zeldin established new guidance urging engine and equipment manufacturers to revise diesel exhaust fluid system software in existing vehicles and equipment. Okay, here's kind of the issue and probably why no administration has done this before. We've had DEF powered vehicles out for over a decade and there's a lot of field inventory. And in order for the older engines to have these new standards, there's gonna have to be software written to make that happen. And there's no, and I mean none, economic incentive for the engine manufacturers to do that. In other words, they're not going to get paid under warranty or get paid by the government or get paid by anybody, the way I read this, to reprogram these older machines. So let's say you've got a 2014 tractor or big truck or RV or pickup or whatever, and you're wanting to go right down to your dealership and get this new software installed so you've got a longer grace period before you go into limp mode if something goes wrong. I don't think that's going to happen. And I don't, I don't think, and I think, once the word gets out on this, that's what's happening. I think all of the calls to the service department at the truck truck places, the uh, pickup truck places and big truck places and tractor dealerships, they're going to get a lot of calls. I want to bring my vehicle in and have it reprogrammed or have your person come out and reprogram it. And that's not going to happen in the foreseeable future. And the big thing in agriculture, we're coming up on fall harvest. And if you've got an older machine or even a brand new machine, and you want to reprogram before fall harvest, I don't think there's any way that can happen. So while the EPA announcement is a good thing for everybody, I think, 
uh, the enactment of it is, is going to be who knows when. Now, some vehicles, of course, are tied in with the Internet. The dealer, once he has the software, can update the whole fleet of everything he's got out uh, in the field uh, over the Internet, over the airwaves, however that works. I don't, I don't really understand it. But uh, if you've got an older machine, I think it's going to be a long wait. Now, the question I've got is can an aftermarket supplier uh, supply this software, and we don't know that yet. So big announcement from EPA going forward at uh, least with over-the-road trucks, big EPA recommendation going forward with the older inventory, but in the real world and with people that are running DEF-powered vehicles right now, uh, several questions that need to be answered and probably a pretty long timeline to get the new software if you get it at all. I appreciate you watching my videos. I would be honored if you would subscribe to my YouTube channel, and you could do that by clicking the mic face icon and make sure you check the bell so you get notified when I post future videos. Here's a link to my website and the Tractor Fun Store with cool things for sale for the tractor owner that helps support my channel. And here's another couple videos you might want to watch. Thanks for watching.